Let's roll the dice and add multiple textures to one block. Let's see how to do that. All right, we find ourselves back at IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to add multiple textures to a single block. And for that, we actually only need a normal block. And the main bulk of the work is going to be done in the uh, blocks model file. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy over the Ruby button here. And we're going to make this uh, the dice underscore block. And then making this here the dice underscore block as well. And instead of a mod stone button block, this is going to be a normal block. Now the values here are, of course, all fine. I think this is okay. And now we actually need to have a normal block stage JSON. All of that I'm going to copy over and all of that is of course available for you in the description below either in the GitHub repository or in individual gists as well. This as you can see simply points to a normal well a block model right so this is fairly straightforward something we've seen plenty of times already now but if I now copy over the dice block model you can see that aha this is a little bit different here and exactly that is the point of this so instead of having cube all as a parent here like for example with the Ruby block, as you can see, where all the textures are the same, we actually have the cube parent, right? And this one actually has textures for each of the sides, so different textures for down, up, north, east, south, and west. So the idea is that those textures are there. If we wanted to rotate this, then of course we would need to do something, something similar as we've done with the test block with the Boolean property, right, where we've had different properties here. So this would be then done in the actual block states, JSON. We're not going to do that in this example. However, this is an example of how to basically specify well each of the different textures here for the actual block. And of course, let's actually add the translation as well, just so that we don't forget that, because that's always something that I you know, tend to forget. So this is going to be the dice block, very straightforward here. And the item model is actually going to be a, well, pretty much exactly the same thing that we've seen already right it just points back to the block model and then of course we still need the textures those of course also avail those of course also available for download and those are going to be the six block dice textures here there you go so all of those and that's pretty much all that we need so the main bulk of the work like i said is in the block model json file here and now Let's see if it works. All right, we found ourselves back in Minecraft again. And as you can see, the dice block has been successfully added. And if I place it down, you can see that every, well, every face of the actual block has a different texture. I can also see the under texture here. Now it will look the same, like no matter what way I place it down. This is of course, once again, the thing that we would need to do in the block states, JSON with basically the horizontal facing property. So we would need to define a new property. And you can also see that the particles are actually uh, not functioning properly, but that is something that is very easily fixed in the model as well. We're going to take a look at that in just a moment. But as you can see, every face has a different texture. Yeah, that's pretty much how easy it can be, right? So there was just a little typo here. This is particle instead of particles, and then the particle will also show perfectly fine. You can, of course, also define any other, well, block texture here as well. So you could, for example, also use any, you know, vanilla texture here just as an example. But that would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I was appreciate a like and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one so yeah